Amber Blackburn. Amber's parents are Melanie and Timothy Blackburn. Her, baby's cl her favorite class is English with Mrs. Kirkwood. Her favorite teacher is Mrs. Kellogg's. We always have competitions in Uno Flip. Most valuable wrestling moments, we started three hours late. All the girl wrestlers started to dance, feel like the chicken dance and cha-cha slide. At this time, her future plans are undecided. Amber Blackburn. Grace Hirons. Grace is escorted by Bill and Vicki Hiram. Her favorite teacher is Mrs. Schaefer because she uh, talks to me like a person and was always there for me. Her most memorable wrestling moment was when her and Jaden, Lily, and Lucy were on their way to one wrestling camp to another and we stopped and ate at Texas Roadhouse. Her first future plans are to attend Manchester University for nursing. Grace Hires. Ethan Amasquita. Ethan's parents are Mary and Pedro Amasquita. His favorite subject is work-based learning with Mrs. Snyder because he gets to experience future career as a class. His most memorable wrestling moment is winning Team State. His future plans are to attend Purdue University and major in nutrition and diabetics or dietetics. Ethan Amasquita. DJ Basham. DJ's parents are Carlene and Greg Basham. His favorite teacher is Mr. Roberts. He's always been my favorite teacher and was the one who got me into wrestling. His most memorable wrestling moment was contributing to winning Team State Championship. His future plans are undecided. DJ Basham. Brady Beck. His parents are Derek and Darla Beck. His favorite teacher is Mrs. Snyder and loves to leave school to learn about the trades. His most memorable wrestling moment was watching his brother qualify for state as a freshman. His future plans are to join the workforce. Brady Beck. Alex Deming. Alex is escorted by Angie and Paul Deming. His favorite class is work-based learning with Mrs. Snyder because he gets to work with amazing people. His most memorable wrestling moment was winning Team State. His future plans are to attend a four-year college while participating in ROTC and then pursue military career after college. Alex Deming. Aiden Myers. Aiden Myers, his parents are Denise Maddox and Justin Myers. His favorite subject is work-based learning with Mrs. Snyder because it allows him to learn and implement important life skills early in life. His most memorable moment is winning Team State. Plans after gra graduation are to attend college and major in web development. Aiden Myers. Mason Ramsey. Mason is escorted by Travis and Alyssa Ramsey. His favorite subject is English taught by Mrs. Shally. He enjoys his friends in there and the stories they read are pretty good too. His most memorable wrestling moment is Winnington Team State. His plans after graduation are to attend college to get a criminal justice degree and then the military. Mason Ramsey. Colin Wiend. Colin is escorted by Amy Barkin and Eric Wiend. His favorite subject is work-based learning with Mrs. Snyder because it has taught him many things about real-world work. His most memorable moment is winning Team State. His future plans are to attend the University of Northwest Ohio for diesel mechanics and raise animal in the livestock industry. Colin Wiend.
There are your 2024 senior wrestlers. good crowd here tonight this whole half of the gym is it's it's not full but it looks full yeah how many jv matches did we end up getting looks like we've got one two three four five six and there's the first takedown for ramsey works right into a cradle And he's got him on his back. Near fall is being counted right now. And for those that don't know, how near fall is counted is you expose your opponent's back to a 45 degree angle or less to the mat. For a, it, if the referee gets a two count, that's worth two points. And if he can get clear to a five, that's worth three. And then you can um, roll him back over if he breaks the, the hold and gets free. Now he's got a had a half, but it rolls through. So he gets three the first time. And uh, another interesting thing, too, is if you don't break that cradle that he had that first time, when you let him get back to his base, but if you still have that cradle and you do it again, you don't get a new set of count. You have to break the hold to get a second set of near fall counts. Okay. They wrestle out of bounds, and they'll start over again with Tippy Valley still down. Got him to his back again. Got a little high and uh, he's able to roll through to his belly. So you see the referee holding three fingers out, showing Mason that he's got a near fall three, but he has the same hold in, so it's not going to be able to get another fresh count. There he gets his. So he's now up eight to nothing. He's bring him back to the mat pretty hard there. He's got a half in. And he gets the fall with one second to go. Good way to finish your high school career at home with a big victory. Now up at 150 pounds is Braylon Smith, and he is wrestling Jacob Bradley. Nice shot down there for a single leg. Defended well. Two takedown for Tippecanoe Valley. Smith was quick back to his feet. Now he's trying to get a reversal here. We uh, reached over the head where we shouldn't have, but we did get away. 
He almost gave up a half Nelson and got put to his back, but he was able to get free and actually get an escape. So now they're back on their feet. Going to work for a takedown. Some heavy collar ties going on up here. And now a little shot, nice sprawl. Got to get his legs back. Out of bounds. About 20 seconds to go here in the first period, and it looks like they're still kind of feeling each other out here. Now we're getting some fakes. Nice fake, got him down. But right at the end of the time, he gets a takedown real quick, but no near fall. Didn't have enough time to get a count out of it. Rochester's up three to two going into the second period. Referee flips a coin, red or green, and we would be the uh, red, we're, we're, we're the home team, even though green signifies home, but since Tippy Valley's green, it's, uh, it's easier yeah. to give them the green band and we're the red band tonight. Yeah. So we chose, and we chose to defer, and they then get to choose what they want to do, and they, they chose to go in the down position to start the period off. So that means that we will get the choice going into the third period. Believe it or not, there's a little bit of strategy in that. When, right. you, when you know you got a match where nobody's scoring and, and especially zero to zero at the end, you want to choose. You don't want to defer. You want to score first. Yeah. So if it ever goes into that overtime scenario where you got choice, it, there's, there is a benefit for scoring first in the match. If you go into that, I call it the seventh period, but it's, it's really the third overtime. Yeah. Um, you, you, you get the choice of go down top or whatever, and if you get away, you win. Or if, if you can hold them down, you win. There's, you don't have to do anything else but do that. Yeah. That, that scenario came into play big time with uh, Marshall. It when he sure won. did, yeah. yes. Yeah. That, that's a, that, that's a, a storybook story right there, how that um, worked out. Yeah. Uh, it, it truly came down to two matches in a row where he got the coin flip yeah. by scoring first. Yeah. Still riding him pretty tough. Got him broken down. He's trying to work what we call a chicken wing, which is an arm across the back. And he's actually got his wrist as well. He's in a good position here to get some near fall, if not a fall. So you're, what, what we try to tell you is you put your, their shoulder in their ear, and now he's trying to, he's trying to kind of come at the back door way of doing it. If he keeps running right here. He might be able to do it. But he's trying to, like, take the shoulder over the back, mm -hmm. and he needs to push it into his earlobe and then walk around, and it, it would go over a little bit easier. A lot easier said by me up here in the stands <laughs> right. than it is out there to actually doing it. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the Valley kid's trying to not let that happen. Yeah, I don't think he's just going <laughs> to, oh, he's got it. i got to roll over yeah. it so, and be done. Did a nice job actually fighting it off. He's got to end it again, but we're down to two seconds to go, so not a lot's going to happen here. I assume we're going to choose down, but uh, we'll see what the coaches decide. Yes, and he does. We're up three to two, two minutes to go. Almost gives up a cradle there. When you stand up, you got to explode out of there. Otherwise, you're exposing yourself to giving up a cradle and getting put to your back. He's got a nice tight waist there, how he's got it all the way around. Oh, he's at lock hands, but they missed it. That's okay. <laughs> a 
Does have a cradle locked up, but he's not in, in good position to turn him. There he's broke it. Now he should be out free for one. Yep, one escape, up four to two. Minute 18 left to go. You know, if you're going to referee wrestling, you got to be in pretty good shape for yourself uh, you do. just to do the refereeing, don't you? You're bouncing <laughs> up and down off that mat as you know every single match, not just once. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like basketball where you can yeah you can run maybe from half court to the end line. I mean, you you really got to be into it. Right, right. Oh, he almost got tossed, but he was able to roll through. He's got a takedown and near fall points right now. He gets the fall. Good job. This, the, this, uh, uh, what's this young man's name from Tippy Canoe Valley? It was Bradley. Okay. Get you back down there on the floor now that they've got that cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. I might try to make my attacks the opposite direction of the map <laughs> for a little while. Let that dry a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> No, they did a good job cleaning it up. I think you said not the first time. What's that? Not the first time. Not, no, this is not been. the first time. I remember a regional here when a boy, I think he drank too much Gatorade, mm. and it all came up on the mat. So there was no chunks, but. <laughs> was that the red Gatorade part of the uh, announcement for the <laughs> stands? <laughs> yeah, it might have been. Stand? <laughs> Got a takedown here. Naven's actually wrestled a couple varsity matches for us this year. He's, he's, uh, he's got a lot of potential. Oh, it looks like we got a sore knee here. It's never fun when your knee pops while you're wrestling. Yeah, it's not fun when anything pops. Well, that's true. <laughs> the older we of course, get, the worse of course, at our age, everything pops with, <laughs> with every step. But. You're not lying there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what he's got here. He's still not putting a lot of weight on it. Mrs. Hughes is out there assessing the situation. So when you when there's an injury like this in a match, you get two minutes of injury time mm -hmm. to uh, – decide if you want to keep going or not. So it, I, I see the referee down there has got his, his stopwatch on is letting him know how much time he's got left. Yeah. Without that two minutes, he's got to decide. Now the problem is, is if it like if he feels good enough to go and he starts wrestling and it does it again, he's he's got to he's got to default out. OK. Yep, he's not going to go on. So we get, a, we get an injury default there. Yeah, he's walking pretty gingerly. I'm sure it's tender. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. If you heard those names, we got Rochester's Matthew Crossland against uh, Valley's Roy Baldridge. Uh, Matthew is, has um, he's wrestled quite a bit for us in the off season. He's been a, one of those youth kids that you've seen around forever. He's just, he's got a lot of experience. He'll he'll step into one of those upper weight classes for us next year and, yeah, and yeah. Fill, try to try to fill that big void. And I think he'll do okay for us. I think he'll win a lot of matches. He'll be a year mature when that time comes around, and he will wrestle in the offseason because he always does. What year is he? He's a sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. I, he may be a freshman. I don't know 100% on that. Uh, you said it so confidently. All my tens and tens of fans that are listening tonight, text <laughs> me and let me know if I'm right or wrong. Tens and tens. That might be a little... Uh, a little bit of high wishing there. Hey, I'm optimistic. <laughs> so we had a takedown with some near fall and an escape. So we're back to neutral like we just started the match. But with a lead. 
for Rochester. So uh, the way that dual meets are scored, I'll probably do that while we got a little bit of um, not a lot of action. Oh, a little duck under almost almost gave up a takedown, but he got it. Ended up go ahead and scoring. But in a, in a duel, there's there's different types of wins. You get a decision. There's a major decision. There's a technical fall, and there's a fall, and they're all worth different points for the team. Mm -hmm. So a decision is win by one point up to seven points, and you get three points for your team. But if you can get to that eight-point lead up to 14 points, you would get a major decision and four points for your team. He's got him on his back close to a pin here. So once you get a 15-point lead on a, on a guy, they'll stop the match totally, and it's a tech fall. Okay. And you get five points for your team. And then a fall or a forfeit or anything like that, is, or, or even an injury default that just happened, is worth six points for, for your team. So that's how they, they change it from individual to a team event. Mm -hmm. So it's always, especially in a really, really close duel, there's a lot of strategy. And believe it or not, there is a lot of strategy right. that you can use in these matches. They actually used quite a bit of it Saturday for the team state title. Um, but, you know, if you're up by seven, you're going to want to work to try to get that eighth point. So if you can get one more point against your guy, that's right. an extra team point that you can get for right. the team. So right now he's up 10 to two. He's got, a, he's got a major decision in hand right now if the match were to end as is. So just some interesting things. I'll probably yeah. say, if, say that again a time or two during the varsity match. That's why you're here. Bring that uh, that knowledge of the sport. Well, I hope at least one person's watching, and maybe they'll they'll retain what I what I say. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. I mean, it's it's popular, especially here in Rochester. I mean, there is, you know, there's a there's a lot of history of you know great wrestling here oh, yeah. in Rochester. You know, I I went to school. He's got him tight. There's a there's a fall. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. That's a, exactly what. Uh, so that's 18 then for the team. Should be 24. They didn't put the six on for uh, the injury. Right, right. At least as far as I can tell from. Right. That is a small number, but. <laughs> yeah, I think they might be up behind on that too. So now we've got Mason Heisey versus. Is it? It is Trevin Hester. But uh, I went to elementary and junior high with Damon Hummel. Yeah. He, he went to Culver. Yeah. Before, yep, before coming here. to Rochester, yeah. yeah. So, you know, my age and, of course, I never, I never dared wrestle him. <laughs> that would have been suicide. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's obviously, a, was he a four-time state qualifier? Four-time state qualifier. He uh, finished his career. I want to say it was 140 and six. And here's an interesting part. I know his losses, but I don't know who I lost to. <laughs> and I was actually out of school by that time. Yeah. When you guys are freshmen. I was a freshman in college. Okay. So Valley gets an early takedown on us here. Hester gets a takedown. And I'm guessing here, but I have a feeling that. All, all six of his losses were in the state championship round right no he lost he lost twice in regular season as a oh. freshman okay um then he lost his match I'm, I'm sorry he lost once in regular season lost twice during the state tournament once before says state and in the first round fr friday night of state his freshman year okay um so there was his two losses there or three let me get this right three losses because he only had one each year after that yeah then his sophomore year he got beat in the finals his junior year got beat in the finals, and then his senior year got beat in the semifinals to the same kid that he lost his junior year. Really? All while weighing 210 pounds. Yeah. And the, hence the 215-pound weight class that we happen to be in right now was created the year after he graduated. Oh. He could have been easily a three-time state champ. Well, and was it still unlimited heavyweight at that time? No, no. It was, it it, was, there it, was a limit it on it? It was capped at 285 okay. then. Okay. Because at one time it was unlimited, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had some 400-pound guys, <laughs> and it, that's the reason why they had to stop it because yeah. it was just way too different. Right. Dangerous. 
So we finished the first period with uh, Hester up two to nothing. And I'm guessing here, but I believe Hester's dad, I coached when he was here at Rochester. I don't know that to be a fact, but I believe it is. I know his son does go to Tippecanoe Valley. <laughs> Referee with a big smile on his face when he flipped his red-green. Oh, I don't know what you want to call that thing where he flips his little coin, I guess. Yeah. To see who gets choice it landed over in the uh, incident area. Oh, he didn't want to go get it. <laughs> he didn't want to go get it. <laughs> it is perfectly clean and sterilized for those out there thinking. It's probably that, the cleanest that, part of the mat at this point. <laughs> at this point <laughs> it is, yeah. So Valley starts on top here in the second period and and uh, is riding pretty tough right now. It's got her hips broken down. Looking for some offensive combination here. Every time Mason kind of bases up here, he looks like he's able to, to break him back down to the mat. And that's the key while you're on top is you want to try to keep the guys, your opponent's hips down on the mat. Now he's up, now he's up. And takes him back down, was able to stop him. So he's base, trying to base build again to try that one more time. Got a lot of youth over there on the opposite side. Yeah. Uh, is it youth night? Are they actually it is. It gonna is. maybe stop this halfway or something and, and announce them? Or? Yeah, I think they said halfway through the, okay. the varsity they're going to okay. do the youth night announcements. Another attempt almost getting away, but he was able to hold us down again. 20 seconds to go in the second period. Score still two to nothing. Yeah, back at looking at that youth, you get numbers like that, and that just means the program's going strong, and, and right. hopefully you can retain them and, and, and keep, them, keep them around and interested in this sport, and we'll be winning some more state titles, hopefully. Right. I heard uh, through the grapevine, uh, actually, I think it came from uh, Logan Sport AD Brian Strong that the IHSA is going to make the girls – Official next year? That's what I heard as well. Yeah. I, I hope so. It'll be a neat neat inaugural season for, for IHSAA sanctioned. Because mm -hmm. um, this year it still is not. Last year, you know, they've been doing it as as like an association. Right. And uh, uh, it's a, a very exciting historical thing that's going to happen next year. And we're going to have at least two girls, as long as everybody stays healthy, that might be able to fight for a title. Correct. Um, what I've heard, so, so okay, we started neutral here in the third period, and, and the Valley was able to get a takedown again, so they're up four to nothing. But what I've heard is for Rochester girls program, they, I think they've only got one or two eighth grade girls that have some experience that are pretty good. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, shoot, we just brought in, a, a, I shouldn't say we, but Coach Wilson and, and Roberts brought in um, quite a few inexperienced girls right. and did a great job this right. year. There's there's a few girls that were right there in the ticket round to, to go to state, but they just couldn't quite quite get that that match done yeah. or had an unfavorable draw and against a very experienced girl. So, you know, it, 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 the future is looking bright because in seventh grade there's four very, very good girls wrestlers. And so in two years you've got your two sophomores that were ranked very high in the state with, with Lily Gerald and, and Lane Pepler. Um, and then you got McKenna McKee. If you can retain all those girls, maybe they go back to basketball. Who knows? We, you know, being the wrestling fan that I am, hope not. I hope they stick <laughs> with it. I mean, you qualify for state in your first year of wrestling, you got some potential. Okay, stop wrestling. They called stalling on green, which is Tippecanoe Valley saying he's not pushing enough to try to get it to turn. He's just riding just for the win. But he is up seven to nothing, so he was able to get some near fall in there. 30 seconds to go. So that stall does not cost no. any points? No. So, so, no. First you get a warning, stall call. Okay. The second 
stall call, you give up one point to, to your opponent. Okay. Oh, we might have a possible reversal. Oh, no, he doesn't get it. Good try. And then if you give up a third stall call, that'll be another point. But then a fourth stall call, you give up two points to your opponent. And if you happen to get a fifth penalty or a stall call, you lose the match, disqualified. Hmm. I've seen it happen. Yeah. It's not very often, but I've seen it happen. We finished seven to nothing. Some good efforts to try to get away, but uh, Hester was able to just control and, and, and not let the Rochester opponent away. So seven to nothing is a decision. It would have been a three point for the for the team. Okay, last JV match, 285. We got Marco Aduno wrestling Michael Samuels. Holy smoke, surely this is another son of a guy I've coached. <laughs> I don't know about this one, but this could be too. All these names, it's like wrestling family around here. Yeah. Does that make you feel old? Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ordunio in on the takedown, a single leg. Got him on, broken down to his hip, He's trying for the turn. Got to break him down. Terry's got him on his hip. He's got a combination here. Now he's built back up. Still holding him down. I think you're looking at our varsity heavyweight next year. Yeah. I assume that's Carlos's brother. That's Carlos's little yeah. brother. He's only a freshman. Okay. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's got a, a bundle here, tight, a tight bundle. And he lost it. Now he's not he's really got to get those arms un, his hands under his arms or he could get turned really easily. He's got him broken down again on his on one hip. Oh, he can't quite get him to go. You know, your wife does the kind of the spearheads that one school, one book program that yes. they do over at Riddle. Yep. And, um, Carlos and a group of the uh, wrestling seniors came in and, and read a chapter. Did they? Last year. Yeah, yeah that's great. Great kid. I hate to, you know, it's just terrible what happened to him yep. you know and yep. the, the uh, accident and everything yes we've had we've had uh our share way too much of our yeah. share of, of losing former wrestlers yeah in yeah the, in the recent future and actually we just we were talking about lily gerald she lost her father just this over the holiday break oh. as well and he was a, a very good wrestler one of my favorites yeah i actually knew jordan Schaefer's dad back from uh high school he yep. went to argus and had a lot of friends there in Argus. Yep. Knew him really well. And good boy, Ornery. Yeah. Good boy. He well, was. Well, yeah. Was I knew his dad, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> he got it on us. Yeah. He um, he was in my daughter's class, so I got to know them very, very well. I was still, I wasn't coaching as much as I'd like to, um, but it, I was still out there trying to trying to help out as much as I could. So I got to know him very well over the years too. Called a few of his matches sitting up here. Yeah. <laughs> Four to one, second period, a minute 15 to go, and we're on our feet. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> it is dark in here. Yeah. And on a single. Got to get that back. Don't want to let him pull that in. Oh, he's in on his own. Kind of reverses that single <laughs> to his single and gets a takedown and near fall, a possible pin. Referee's in there digging in, looking. There's your hard job right now. Is, I mean, he is right down there in the mix. If those guys re-rolled, that's a lot of weight that get on him. <laughs> I think right. about that a lot. He Got gets him. the fall. 30 seconds to go in the second period. 
That wraps up our uh, JV matches with uh, Rochester. With is it 24 or will it be 30 to three? No, they just uh, they never put that six on there for that uh, injury. So okay, so either yeah. way, 24 to three or 30 to three if they put it on there. So uh, a good showing on the JV side for Rochester. Now we'll do lineups for the for the varsity team. Um, real quick while they're lining up, let's talk more about the girls that are qualified for state. Um, we talked a little bit about McKenna McKee. And um, now let's go back to the next one, which is I, I mentioned her name a time or two, is Lane Pepler. She's a sophomore. She's actually um, not doing any other sports and concentrating on wrestling right now, and it has shown this year a lot. Uh -huh. She is up to seventh in the rankings right now, the newest rankings that have come out. Um, she placed second last weekend at semi-state, so she will wrestle a girl who got third place from another semi-state. And this girl's name is Eden Knight from Columbus East, who is actually ranked 10th in the state. So she does have, a via the rankings, a little bit of an edge, they're yeah, saying. Yeah. So, but you still got to go out and wrestle. That's why you do it. Sure. Um, so it's pretty exciting. And, and she's only a sophomore, which is great for the future. And uh, the, the girl from Columbus East is a junior. So that'll be an exciting match for a very winnable Um Still doesn't guarantee her a top eight in the state. You've got to win two times to get in the top eight in the state. Um, so if you win your first two matches, you're in the top four, and you can't get any worse than that. So that's pretty exciting for mm -hmm. her, too. Um, but then our third one is senior Grace Hirams, who's been a staple for the girls for quite a few years. Um, 155 is what she's wrestling. She's ranked sixth in the state right now. Last year she was runner-up at 155. Yeah. But yeah. Um, for the finals last week, or actually in the semifinals, she got beat by a girl that was a freshman mm. and, and very, very good. So it's just amazing like, as much as time as, as Grace has actually put into this sport herself that you know a freshman comes in and, and it just shows you how much it's, it's improving so much right, so right. quick. Um, so let me get this in real quick. Um, she drew Miley, Miley Skinner from Madison. She's a sophomore, but she's ranked fourth in the state. So rankings don't mean much on that. We're, re we're the returning runner-up. So they both have very, very winnable matches. Very exciting. Starts at 11 o'clock at Kokomo, Friday. All right. Let's get these more. 175 pounds for Valley, Colton Crabb, and for Rochester, Declan Gard. At 190, Valley will forfeit to Colin Wynn. Yeah! At 215 pounds for Valley, Dalton Albert will wrestle Rochester's Alex Deming. At 285 pounds for Valley, Colton Sisk, and for Rochester, Brady Beck. At 106 pounds. Valley will forfeit to Rochester's Grant Holloway. A 113 pounds for Valley. Kodiak Killen will wrestle. And for Rochester, Reed Perry. A 120 pounds for Valley. Aaron Babbitt. And for Rochester, Connor Fugate. A 126 pounds for Valley, Thad, Shambaugh, and for Rochester, Lane Horn. A 132 pounds, Valley will forfeit to Rochester's DJ Basham. At 138 pounds for Valley, Joe Leibarger will wrestle Brantlin Brady of Rochester. At 144 pounds for Valley, Remington Rickle will wrestle Rochester's Kale Shots. At 150 pounds for Valley, Denver Wilson, and for Rochester, Wyatt Davis. And we'll finish off the night at 157 with Valley's Mason Fincher and Rochester's Ethan Amosquito.
At this time, if everyone will please rise and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. If we could have team captains for both teams, please. About, uh, I don't, I can't tell for sure. It looks like that might be Basley Owens down there with the uh, Valley squad as an assistant coach for the team. Can't completely tell for sure if that's him or not. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, yeah. One of the one of the top wrestlers from uh, from Valley over yes. the years. I mean, he just uh, just graduated last year. Correct. Yeah, yeah. He was in the same weight class with Alex last year. They wrestled a couple times, and he gave him a go. Yeah. Um, but, but Alex was able to come out on top of, of both matches they were, had. I think it was just two, yeah. Was he a two-time state qualifier, one single time? I think he just did it once and, and fell short in the ticket round two times, I believe. Yeah, yeah. All right, we are starting out this duel tonight at 165 pounds. And it'll be Valley's Colton Crab versus Rochester's Brant Beck. And at 165 pounds for Valley, Parker Addison, your Rochester Zebra, Brant Beck. Well, I told you guys wrong. They, they, it looks like they flip-flopped their 165 and 170 pound um, yeah, wrestlers. You, you told me that. Yeah. You, you forgot to write it down, didn't you? I did. I forgot <laughs> to flip-flop them myself on my notes here. So yeah. Looks like Parker's a freshman and, and, and Branch just a sophomore, but um, he is one very exciting wrestler to watch. <laughs> As you see, he's already got to take down and cut him. He's, he's just in-your-face type wrestler for six straight minutes and, or longer if we have to go into overtime. And I don't think he's one you want to take in overtime. He has a motor that just doesn't quit. That's right. He does not. It does not. Um, currently, he actually, the new rankings that just came out, he dropped two spots to sixth because of a couple of guys that are ranked higher than him lost to some other people that they placed above Brandt. And and uh, so it's not a big thing. You know, it's a, it's, it's a popularity contest. But it's, you know, it, it, could, it could work on your mind a little bit, give you a little bit of incentive to, to – Maybe fight a little bit more than you normally do, but currently right now he's uh, three takedowns and three escapes, working on his fourth takedown now. He 
you know, we, we were talking about McKenna McKee's athletic ability, and, and of all the years that I've been around the wrestling program, Brant may be one of the most gifted athletic kids I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got the kids yelling too <laughs> every time he gets a takedown. Um, if, if you happen to watch other duels or, or, or matches quite a bit, you'll hear people yelling too a lot. Mm -hmm. um, interesting thing that just changed for collegiate wrestling this year, takedowns are worth three points in, in the collegiate match now. Gives it a little bit more value to a takedown, Yeah. which I like it. Um, because I've always thought I, I work my butt off to get a takedown on the guy. He gets two points, and then I let him go, or he gets away, and he's got one. So it's like, yeah, it's double the points, but it's, it's a, lot easier to, a lot easier to get away than it is to get a takedown right. most of the time. So it's, it, it adds a, in another dimension to, to collegiate wrestling when, you know, when it usually comes down to it, a takedown is what it takes to win. I hate to do it, but I can't. Uh, I can't resist. So the end of the first period here, we got the trucker score up. That's a, that's a ten, ten four, ten good buddy. Four. <laughs> Second period, we're going neutral. Stop that shot. That's a nice, nice defense on that shot. Another takedown. Some near fall on the edge of the mat. I would love to explain the edge of the mat and, and where you call it in and out, but it's too difficult, and I can't even quite explain it the right way, and I, it, it's almost like it's subjective yeah. to a lot of people. But he gets the fall when the guy's shoulders are completely out of, out of the black part of the circle, but his supporting parts are still in. Okay. Second match, Declan Guard, sophomore. He's not ranked in the state, but he is got an eighth ranking in the semi-state. Top four from your semi-state advanced to state, so he's he's going to be able to battle for a, for a possible ticket to to go down to state and wrestle. And he's wrestling that that Colton Cobb I, or Colton Crab I mentioned earlier. He is a junior. Working on his second takedown now. Scores four to one, as you hear from the youth in the background. <laughs> I like that. That lets me know when I got to put points on. There you go. Oh, they're even telling you what offensive move he's working on. He's got a wing in right now. <laughs> you don't need me. Right. I didn't know they were going to be here. That's awesome. Kind of almost reminds me of those birds in, uh, was it Finding Nemo where there's yeah, a mine? Yeah, mine, 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 mine yeah. <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear them at home, but it's it's uh, very entertaining. Yeah. Four to two, lets them back up, so, so we're neutral. Upper body ties here. Nice snap, spins, gets his two. Real nice snap down. Quick takedown, quick escape. 25 seconds to go. So now's the time he'll start thinking, get his takedown, ride him out for the period. Mm -hmm. There's a two with six seconds to go. We're working out. Three and a half seconds to go in the period. Declan has done a really, really good job this year. He's bumped up a lot of weight. He wrestled around the 150 last year, and now mm -hmm. he's in the 170s. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a big difference for him, but he's, he's really handled it very, very well. Is he a junior? He is only a sophomore. Sophomore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, it, we talked about the girls' basketball team with those gaps. We've got a lot of seniors. I think there's one varsity junior. I can tell you that here in a second. And we got 
a few sophomores and a few freshmen. So you know, we get those gaps as well, still even in a program that's thriving with a lot of kids. Yeah. A little bit of a headgear issue here for Declan. I had my ones and ones of listeners just message me that says, yes, they can hear those kids. <laughs> ones and ones. <laughs> And no, it it's is not, not my you're mother. not like The Rock. <laughs> not The Rock, no. Don't have the millions and millions. That's right. You know, believe it or not, and this is probably going to make everybody that's watching this mad, I've, I've been getting into, uh, I don't know if you remember Jim Cornette. He's a, he was a uh, manager, pro wrestling manager back uh, in the old territory days. Okay. And uh, he has a podcast, and I've been listening to a lot and just no talking kidding. about the old, like, oh, Mid-South yeah. wrestling and the championship wrestling from Florida. Yeah, and, they were hardcore. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was, it's probably not the right way to say it, but it's, it's almost gang-like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mob. Mob. Mob would be yep, a good, yep. yeah. <laughs> That'd probably be better. Yeah. And on a single, drops him to his butt, and he gets his two. So uh, I, I'm kind of realizing that the youth over there maybe don't quite have the attention span. The two weren't, wasn't as loud that time. Yeah, it's kind of fading, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, There's more of a near two. fall count here. This is a, a little tilt, but he actually might be able to reposition himself to work for a fall. Nope, just gets uh, oh, the same move. So he's hold, showing him the three, but since it's the same move, he won't get a second count for a second set of three near fall points. Oh, that's pretty tight. And he gets a fall. With a forfeit. So that puts the Zebras up 18 to nothing after three matches. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, our upper weight classes a little bit ago. And um, last week, as they were previewing the state finals, uh, the duels, they were talking about, oh. good match right here. Um, they were they were talking up the upper three of South Adams like they would put them against any 1A team. Mm -hmm. We went 3-0 against them. <laughs> right. <laughs> with bonus points in every single match. Fall, major decision, fall. Yeah. All of them, all of the Adam Central boys, just like ours, they, they came off their, what is it, three-time state runner-up yeah. in 1A yep. in football? Yep. Quick takedown by, by Deming in 25 seconds. You know, the, the thing that I don't uh, care for with that, now they have to move up to 2A with the team that uh, I think Indianapolis Lutheran. Yeah. They're they're both moving up to 2A because of right. the, their success factors. So. Yes, and and I don't like it because it was all done by that senior class of Adam Central. Right. They graduate. Now, I'm not saying Adam Central's not going to be good after that, but right. you're losing the talent that did that. Right. So I, I think that needs to be relooked at, in my opinion, but who am I? So uh, Deming's up 2-1. to one. Uh, Last week in his, in his match, actually, that was the first points that he gave up. I think all season without giving up an escape or something like that to somebody, mm -hmm. he was actually scored upon with a reversal by that the the fella from South Adams, but he was quickly went right on a reversal on him. Oh. Felton has a nice front headlock here on the up. Oh, let it go. I'm really quite anxious to see how um, Mr. Albert will do going through the Peru sectional regional and the Fort Wayne semi-state. Right. Because he's got the ability to be a state qualifier. Yeah, I think he does. But he will have to wrestle at, at some point, I would imagine, at Fort Wayne, that South Adams fellow that's pretty good. He was their, uh, I think he was their linebacker. Mm-hmm. Adam Central. Yeah. Finished the first period two to one. Yeah. A lot closer 
than uh, the last time so far. Oh, Dalton had to go, I think, clear his nostril out yeah. over there real quick. Well, that was better than what we saw in the JV match. And, and quite honestly, it, he had to take injury time for that, even though it took five seconds because he had to go off the mat and, and do that. And uh, actually counts to, as injury yep, time. Yep. So, so how injury time works is first one, you know, you take your time off of your two minutes, but you get to go ahead and wrestle. Um, the second one, your opponent gets to have a choice. What, let's say that you're, you're on your feet right now wrestling. It, let's, and Alex, let's say it happens again. Alex gets to choose what he wants to do. He could choose down, get yeah. an escape, and then they're back on their feet and gains mm. a point. Mm. So this period started with uh, um, Albert choosing down, but Deming shows the referee like two hands, like, you know, uh, like a field goal. And it just means I want to go neutral, give him his escape point. We're going to start on our feet. Yeah. So that's what they did here. And Alex gets a quick takedown on him and then uh, immediately gets an escape. If you haven't noticed already, Rochester does like to wrestle on their feet. Okay. So, so you get a lot of takedowns. Um, they're going to wrestle you. And it, it's, it's not real good to, like, just take them down and, like, let them up. But if a guy's working and, and, and trying to get away, you kind of just easily let, maybe let them go a little bit to work more, more feet mm -hmm. than, than you do on the mat. The score six to three right now, and and uh, you heard Coach Guard over there on the side getting a fresh start. You want to drive him off the mat so he can start back in the center, not wrestling on the edge. Alex shows um, referee again to go, to go. He wanted to go neutral, but looks like the clock didn't get stopped right away. Going to add a little bit of time back to it. I've done that many a times too, and and <laughs> you got to really pay attention when you're doing the the score table. Oh, you know all about it. You're doing it right here. Mm. But you don't have to push stop and go on the On, on the, the time. timer, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned my lesson last year at the sectionals. That was next to impossible to try and get that clock to match yep, up. Yep. Picture in picture is much better. Yes. Got to use that technology to your advantage. Yeah. It's hard enough keeping up with the score. Yes, it is, especially takedown and, and escapes. It happens a lot. You get those matches where there's a lot of reversals and, and near falls and reversal and near fall. That's, that's, it's hard to keep up. Fifteen seconds. Rochester coaching staff's yelling short time, wanting Alex to try to get one more before the period ends. He's in on a single. Bumped him to his butt. He's got his two on the edge with three seconds to go. Eight to four after two. Should be Rochester's choice, and then Alex chooses to go down. So this will be a match where he's up four points, pretty much controlling the match. Mm -hmm. But he's probably going to try to work for some for that at least major decision. <coughs> and quite honestly, it's, oh, almost gave up some near fall when he tried to do the Gramby roll through. Got a little caught up and maybe got a one count out of the referee, but you got to get a two to, to give up the two near fall points. So he scored his points in on a shot. His aggressiveness just had the referee call stalling on the other guy who was just playing defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, but, you, you know, that's, that's some of the things about wrestling that you can actually control the other guy's performance by, you know, sometimes your best defense is offense. <laughs> you don't have to worry about your defense because you're working your offense all the time. Yeah. In your face type wrestling. And it's not that, that Albert's not doing anything. It's just, there he goes. Oh, defended the shot. Tried to spin around and get his quick too. Alex, currently in the new rankings right now, is ranked number six in the state of Indiana, the entire state, and third in the semi-state. 
So he's having a great season, undefeated still. As was Brant earlier, and soon to be Brady Beck is, is undefeated as well. And we got one more still undefeated in, in uh, Lane Horn at 126. So f at this point in time, going into after this duel, it's, it's conference, then sectionals. So they're undefeated still going into that. That's it's yeah. very impressive. Because we, we, we do wrestle a pretty tough schedule, and then you just wrestled for a team state title against right, the right. other teams. <laughs> <laughs> the same quality of you. So these guys put a ton of effort, and like you said earlier, they are irreplaceable as seniors. Yeah, there's nobody in that. I mean, you got to get invited to that team state duel, so there's nobody in there that shouldn't be in there. Right, right. And there's a win. It's only a decision, 10 to 4. So that's in a close duel in a match where your kids should be winning by extra points. That's actually a victory in, 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 in the Tippy Canoe Valley side, keeping it to a decision, only three points. We talk a lot about not giving up bonus points in the matches maybe you're not supposed to win even though you're trying if, if you can just keep it close and not give up those bonus points it helps in the team duels oh caution right off the bat looks like uh brady beck was a little too excited to uh get this match going so brady beck currently ranked number two in the state and number two in our semi-state behind a crown point kid of one of those powerhouse schools that we've been talking about. Wrestling sophomore Colton Sisk already with a quick takedown, escape, and in on another takedown. And there it is. Quick breakdown. Now he's out in the front. Just there you go. Spin him to let him get up and get a one. So I'm 18 points. They still have 18 in... Looks like for Rochester. Yeah, they have haven't put it in. It should be 21. 21. Yeah, 21 nothing. Nice takedown. Still got a minute to go in the period. A lot of collar tie-in and, and changing directions. There's a nice double leg, high double. We call it a blast double by Brady. Twenty seconds, probably going to ride here. Finish the period with an eight to three lead, unless he can get some kind of turn here before it's over. He's got a chicken wing. <laughs> you heard the youth yelling. <laughs> he just is going to get some near at least. He gets it with one second to go. And a one under six that should put the score at 27 to zero. And then we get a, a forfeit from Grant Holloway, who's fresh back three weeks ago, had a knee surgery. Yeah. And uh, was able to come back and got cleared uh, just in time for Team State and came in big for us with three falls. Or maybe two falls and a forfeit. Yeah. But, and, and he looked really, really good. That's crazy. So that was a big pickup for us right before the big tournament. I think it. Is that right? I'm thinking it should be 30 to nothing. Um, looks like they have, what, 33? They have 33 up there, but I'm not certain if that's right. Two takedown for Reed Perry, freshman for Rochester. I believe he's wrestled a little bit in middle school, come out this year. Um, had a rough season. You know, again, a freshman getting thrown into the varsity level, mm -hmm. and you're going to wrestle some pretty good kids, and he has. And he, he, he gives it all he's got. There's no doubt about it. He doesn't go down and go out there and just lay, lay over for you. A lot of learning going on. Okay, two to one right now. Let's see. A 
They're right. 33. 33, 33 to nothing. Should have never second guessed them. <laughs> Tippecanoe Valley wrestler Hillen is also a freshman. So far, looking fairly equal. Nobody standing out anything here. Small two to one lead for, for Rochester. Reed is in on a single leg, but as Right now, currently, the kid's defending and spins around and gets his two. So they both have a takedown, but right now he's up three to two with the escape. Valley is up three to two. Brings him back to the mat safely. College, they call that mat return. Good mat return. Oh, it just runs out of time of getting a one. Three to two, Tippecanoe Valley leads after one. Rochester chooses down. Armbar, trying to run it around. Decides to try for a cradle on the opposite side. He might have it locked up. It looks like he does. Oh, there's his turn. Got a two count, so he's got two near guaranteed. But he's going to try to go for more right here. Oh, really close. There he got. He ended up getting the five count, so he's got three near off that. Broke the cradle. Now he's working on another offensive move. Got him broken down. Okay, he's starting to get another near fall count. One, two. Got a four count the first time. Still only a four count, so he's only got two near after all that so far. But he's still got the same hold. He's going to try it one more time if he can as Reed's trying to break the hold. Keeps getting a four count, not getting that fifth one, that fifth swipe. Now he's got his three. 15 seconds to go in the period. Hillen is up six to two with a guaranteed three points and he gets a fall, one second to go. We've had a lot of uh, falls here, right? You know, one or two seconds left in the period. Right. And they're on the board, 33 to six. 120. We have Connor Fugate against Aaron Babbitt. Oh, announcing the youth. For both our black and gold teams. First off, Beckham to Lens. Zoe Binion. Giovanni Vendez, Cohen Queen, Bela Lees, Bowden Lees, Lincoln Wally, Tobias Paulson, Brenton Smith. Jacob Miller, Carter Ballman, Owen Brady, Roman Coffin, 
River Wyatt, Liam Day, Howard Day, Bruce Mendez, Brantley Helt, Jace Lawson, Blaine Pitts, Derek Heisey, Landon Heisey, Mason McLaughlin, Lincoln Schultz, Lyndon Schultz, Graceland Beck, Wyatt Beck, Carson Banks, Lucas Inyard, Carson Inyard, Carter Overmeyer, Gates Newton, Gil Newton, Abraham Seward, Riker Smith, Vince McKee, and your coaches, Damon Beck, Tristan Wilson, Bryce Roberts, Trish Justin Miller, Josh Overmeyer, J.D. Howard, and Serenity Howard. Thanks for everything you do, coaches, and the future of Rochester Wrestling is bright. Okay, here we go, back at it, 120 pounds. Connor Fugate against freshman Aaron Babbity, or Babbitt. Nice outside single, switches off to a double. Defended, oh, and a quick spin by Tippecanoe with the quick takedown. Two to nothing, Tippecanoe Valley. Working on a power half. It's neat to see those youth kids and then seeing their parents how they were in some way shaped tied to the wrestling program at least by being a map mate or a wrestler or, or just a big fan or whatever the case may be, but it, it's becoming a family thing. Seeing generations and generations. I've been able to, to coach one that I'm, I've coached his kid back in the day who's in high school now. Again, showing my age. Right. <laughs> Still two to nothing here with uh, Tippy Valley riding real nice here. About 45 seconds to go. Rochester's up to their base. Need to try to stand up and get away here. Okay, there, got a half. Spinning around, got him broken down to his back. He's able to fight off and get out of bounds, but he gave up two near falls, so the score is four to nothing. Rochester back to the center, will start down.
Fresh start, here we go. Second period. Well, we don't have a lot of action right here. I'd give a plug to Mr. Guard. Been coaching here for a long, long time. 22 years, I believe, and he's got 280 dual meet victories. Um, very, very short list of coaches that have 300 wins, and he should be able to get to that um, maybe next year, if not the year after. Now we got a saw in the back. Valley gets a fall. Nice half. Hard to fight off of that one. Uh, makes the score now 33 to 12. Now up 126. And at 126 pounds for Valley, Thad Shambaugh and for Rochester, Lynn Horn. Okay, Thad Shambaugh's a, a, a pretty accomplished wrestler himself, wrestling Lane Horn, who last year as a freshman was weight number one in the state the entire season until he got to state. Um, quick takedown for Lane. Um, yeah, Lane wrestled 106 last year and is now wrestling 126, so he's made a, a big leap in, in uh, weight classes himself, and he's done a very, very good job. Um, nothing short of domination this entire season. Uh, undefeated still, as I mentioned earlier. Um, just this is this is a kid that that uh, he's another level when it comes to off-season wrestling. He's he's at academies all the time, travels an hour and a half to to work with with. Uh, world-renowned coaches, um, really loves the sport, puts a lot of time and effort into it, and, you know, he got dedicated parents that, are, that allow him to do it. Right. He's got Thad, again, totally out of bounds and gets the fall because his supporting parts of his body were still in bounds and was able to get the fall. There is a change in the uh, Rochester line. Um, real quick because it went kind of fast. Um, Lane is ranked seventh in the state right now at 126, second in the semi-state that we go through mm -hmm. um, to a crown point wrestler. So it'll be very interesting for him, but um, a lot of people didn't know last year that Lane tore his meniscus in his knee at conference last year and wrestled the entire tournament series with a torn, torn knee. And uh, not making excuses why things happened to end abruptly at state, but uh, um, he just wasn't 100% and, and uh, just – they, they, they don't make excuses for sure. The Horn family does not make excuses for, for any of that. He tried. He did what he thought was best and, and tried at it. So what happened here was uh, DJ Bassham decided to bump up to 138, and they did a double forfeit at 132. So no points are scored there. So DJ Sr. gets to have a, a match on his home floor for the last time. Okay, so this is Basham. Basham versus... Uh, Liebarger. Liebarger. And we had a quick takedown already and an escape. So DJ's up two, two to one. In on an outside hit single here. We're going to switch off to a double. A lift. Nice mat return. Um, Liebarger's got his arm caught on his head, so we're able to put a half in and get it points here for a near fall. Looking, looking for a possible fall. That's a tight half he's got in there. He's got to come off the legs if he, if he can. I, he might be trying to... Okay, yep, he's just trying to get a split here, hook those legs in, and arch. DJ's wrestled 138 all season long, but for the Team State Duel Saturday, he was able to cut down to 132, which is, uh, gives us a lot of options for bumping up and down the things like we just did right here. Um, so it's a quick fall for this, but uh, 132 might give him a better shot during the State Series run. Um, he's really come on as of lately, is wrestling real well. I keep talking, and they just announced the next ones. 144, we got freshman Kale Schatz, ranked number eight in our semi-state, uh, going against Remington Rickle of Valley, a junior. Is that 45 to 12? Is that our score? That is correct. Okay. Trying to keep up with all this. Yeah, it happens fast. Yeah. Quick takedown by Kale. At, for the the match when we when we won team state 
he was the deciding factor. His match was the one that sealed the deal. Even though there were more matches to go, his win gave us enough points that even if they won every match the rest of the way, they couldn't catch us. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty exciting. And he got a quick fall right there. Kale is a very accomplished wrestler, wrestler in his own. He was a triple crown runner um, during eighth grade in his age group last year. But stepping into the varsity level at 144, he's seen a lot of mature mature fellas. He's just 15 years old. Right. And uh, he's, he's actually really grown here in the past couple weeks and has, has really shown a big big change in him. So now we got Wyatt Davis, junior, the only junior on, on the varsity lineup, um, up against – Denver Wilson, a junior from Valley. Wyatt, as a freshman, qualified for state. Right. And uh, um, did not wrestle last year. Um, he started but uh, had some some uh, personal issues and uh, chose not to finish the season. And he's back out this year, which is it's a huge help to the team. And he was a smaller wrestler too. But he's put on, you know, obviously growing, you know, puberty and all that stuff. He's really put on some weight as well wrestling 150 for us this year and having a good season. He is currently ranked 17th in the new ranking polls in the entire state and ranked 8th in our in our uh, semi-state. And that'll change as he keeps going here. Got a, got a little splatle in right here on him and gets a quick fall as well. First period fall in 36 seconds. Puts the score 51 to 12. Now here we go. get to finish the night off with a senior against Mason Fincher. Nice single coming in, still able to pull it in. Oh, a little nice tight body brings him right down to the mat. There's his counts for near. Got two, three, got a two count. Two near fall, four to nothing. Hey, Mesquite is another one that's done a nice job for us. He's kind of, as a senior, this is really his first year of full varsity action. Mm -hmm. um, done a nice job. He's got himself in trouble. He's got a cradle, but he really put himself in a, in a dangerous position to give up a reversal and some near fall, if not a fall. He was able to roll through and go out of bounds. So we'll get a fresh start here in the center. Twelve. Seven twelve, is that right? I believe so. I'm trying to That's what I see. Those numbers are really small. Yes, they are. Even even with my new glasses. Yes, yeah, 12 is what they've got. Yep. Yeah, it is hard to see the team score in that uh, configuration on the monitor across the way. Yeah, I know Ethan's really dedicated wrestling. He decided uh, not to play football this year so he could uh, get ready for wrestling That's right. season. Yep, yeah. yep. He did a lot of off-season stuff. He's always has – the kid works very hard. He's got a great work ethic. Um, and there's it gets his fall. Good job for him on his last home match too. Well, that does it. That's the match. Looks like it's a 63 to 12 victory for the Zebras. I think they responded very well from Saturday. They weren't on that. Uh, the uh, after success high going to a low, so they did a good job. Lane Pepler and McKenna McKee all advancing to the state for the girls. Good luck. Well, I want to thanks for having me out. Doing yeah, this. I, I enjoyed it. Appreciate you coming because uh, you definitely gave a much better flair to the uh, broadcast <laughs> than I ever would have been able to. And boy, it, it was it was all I could do at some points there. I mean, those those matches were going so fast they just to get so the fast. next names in for yep. the next one to try and keep up with everything. So I appreciate you. Yeah. Really keeping it up and, and making sure the score was right and everything was right. And 
again, uh, thanks to uh, Caleb Wilson here uh, for, uh, you know, doing what he does for us. I'll give you a little shot here, Caleb, before we go. Hopefully he's not doing anything there. That's Caleb. He is senior night. Senior give night. him a give him That's a senior right. night shout out as well here. He is, and uh, Kate Johnson, like I said, two just uh, super uh, kids, and and you know, of course Caleb's dad, uh, Seth. You know he he's not too bad himself. He works for us at RTC. He sure does. Yeah, does does a lot of stuff. So. Well, Chad, any final thoughts here? Good, uh, good match, and uh, just an all-around uh, good night here for the Rochester Zebras on Senior Night. Yeah, just the final thoughts are that the Zebras finished uh, twenty and two for the season on dual meets, um, putting Coach Guard's record up to two hundred eighty-one dual meet victories in his career. Uh, very impressive stat in its own. Um, we look forward to getting these boys even healthier than what they are right now, and seeing what they can do at conference in a week and a half. And then uh, they start the state series week after that. Where are they doing conference? Maconquah still? Conference is at Maconquah. Yeah. And then uh, then they go to Plymouth, obviously, sectional. Penn for regionals, semi-state East Chicago Central. And then actually state is being held in Evansville this year. Yeah. As, as yeah as Game the, Bridge uh, has got the, the All-Star all -star game. NBA All-Star game. NBA game. Yeah. So yep. I can't believe that they got kicked out for an NBA All-Star game. <laughs> right. <laughs> so – uh, quick update here: the Lady Zebras uh, lead at the half, twenty-one to nine, down at Logan Sport. Nice. Yeah. Yep. That's so, great. Yep. So our next broadcast here on Channel Four will be uh, Friday night, uh, assuming we can get in with the weather. Uh, we will be down at uh, Lewis Cass for the uh, the boys' basketball team as they take on the Kings, and then we'll be back here at Rochester on Saturday as the girls take on Lewis Cass here at home. Big uh, conference matchup for them. Right. Big weekend. Yep. So uh, thanks again, Chad, for coming in. For uh, Chad Morgan, uh, I'm about Seth, Caleb Wilson, <laughs> I'm Steve Stricker. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Good night here. The Rochester Zebras win it over Valley 63-12, to your final. Good night, everybody.